Hello, it's Scottismas here. Welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VII. Let's go. So, if you remember last time, we just got to our hometown, Nibelheim. And so there's going to be a bit of looting to be done here. So while I'm going around looting all the houses, I'll tell you what I got up to in my own time. He's got a tattoo number six. He has something. A luck source. Yeah, so we're going to go around all the houses and collect some items. So while we're doing that, I'll tell you what I did. Because I did a bit of kind of off-camera grinding. Just because there was a few bits and bobs I wanted to do. Um, along the way, each of our characters, Aeris, Red 13 and Cloud, all picked up an extra limit break. Which I'll show off next time we're in a battle. Uh, we picked up a couple of enemy skills, which was the main thing we did. Uh, so we picked up an enemy skill near Junon called White Wind. And I've got a little video I'll show for you here, where basically it, the only way you can get get that enemy skill is by manipulating the enemy, because it's a healing spell, so the enemy would never actually do it on you. So you've got to manipulate them and get them to do the healing spell on you, and then there you go. Yeah, get them to do it on you, and then you'll learn it. Um, so that's one, the white white wind enemy skill. There's another enemy skill called Big Guard, which you learn just by the Costa del Sol. And again, that's one, it's a kind of defensive, you know, it's defensive spell. So you could only learn it by manipulating the enemy and getting them to cast it on you. And Big Guard is like, I mean, a lot of people say it's the best enemy skill in the whole game. It basically casts a uh, magic barrier and regular barrier on yourself. So it increases your defense against physical attacks and magic attacks. So very, very good thing. It's very expensive on the magic, but really good spell to have. Yeah, we also collected, along the way, we collected a bunch of money as well. So I went back to Cosmo Canyon and I got a HP plus and an MP plus for all three members of the crew. So we've got them all equipped now. And the only other thing I did off camera was to collect the mithril, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So basically, there's a place that you can get to once, you can only get to it once you've got the buggy. So you need to get the buggy, you need to drive into Costa del Sol, and that'll allow you to go back over to Junon, but still have the buggy with you. And so you do that, and then you can cross rivers over on the other kind of, the other continent. And so you do that, and then you can get to a cave just north of Junon, I believe it is. And there's a guy in there who will give you mithril if... You, if it's, a, it's a really weird thing. Basically, if the number of enemy, if the number of battles that you fought in the game ends in the same two digits, so if you fought 133 battles, 144 battles, 155 battles, and so on. If they're the same two digits, he'll give you an item. If they're odd digits, he'll give you mithril. If they're even digits, he gives you some kind of ring. I can't remember what the ring is. Um, but mithril is what we want. Mithril is going to be able to be exchanged later for Eris's final limit break. Right, so that is everything that I've done off camera. We've looted the whole city and now we're gonna go and do what we came here for. Which is into Shinra Mansion again. If you remember, this is where we um, met Sephiroth for the first time. I must get rid of all those that stand in the way of my research. Even that one from the Tex. I scientifically altered him and put him to sleep in the basement. If you want to find him, then search the area. But this is merely a game I thought of. It's not necessary for you to participate, if you don't want to. There seems to be another letter. Read it. Move the dial on the safe carefully, but quickly. You have 20 seconds. You cannot go past the numbers while turning. The four hints for the numbers are... Dial 1 the lid of the box with the most oxygen. So basically this, this little puzzle here is going to give us four clues to four uh, numbers that we have to type in on the safe and we're going to have to open this safe if we want to get a special, a couple of special items and a new character. So the first one is the lid of the box with the most oxygen.
Second one is behind the ivories, short of T and Ray. The third one is the creak in the floor near the chair on the second floor. Then to the left, five steps, up nine steps, left two steps, and up six steps. Yeah, that was quite a lot. Thankfully, I, I know off the top of my head where that is. And the fourth dial is very sneaky. See, there's actually a space for an extra line there. The fourth dial is written in invisible ink. The fourth row has been written in invisible ink. I don't know why we can see it. It's supposed to be invisible. So the fourth dial we know is right 97. So I'm literally going to have to write these down. Because <laughs> I can't remember. Can't remember. What the codes are off the top of my head. I'm not that good. I know where where to find them. So one of them I believe is behind the piano. Something's written on the floor. Left 10. So dial number two is left 10. And then, where was, oh. Right, let's deal with these dudes first. I think there's some enemy skills that we can learn along the way here as well. Didn't realise we were coming in here injured. Yeah, so I'll show off these enemy skills when the opportunity arises. Let's whack a bit of mantra magic on the go. Ooh, wallop. So this is what Mantra Magic does. Fires a load of missiles. That's pretty weak, isn't it? Yeah, that does attack all enemies, though. Shame there's only one at the moment. Come on, let's just deal with this guy, and then we can collect... Carry on collecting the codes for the safe. So if you did know, you know, you don't have to collect the codes if you actually knew what they were. It's kind of, you know, it's not a requirement of the game that Cloud sees the codes. So if you do know them or you've found them on the internet or whatever, you can just go and instantly type them in on the safe. Boom. Ooh, nearly a level up for red there. Yeah, we went up a few levels along the way, obviously, as well, when we were off camera. Nothing too major, though. So the next two bits of the code are upstairs. Ah! Again! Da, 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 da. Oh, the killer pumpkins. Right, so let's do some... Oh god, what's going on? Oh, she's been silenced. Yeah, that's great, that is. <laughs> so, Eris has been silenced, which means that she can't do any magic. Which is not good, considering pretty much all she's good for is magic. <laughs> oh no! Red's been silenced, and so has Cloud. Okay, no magic of this battle then. Oh god, I hate these guys. And they've done funny breath, which means that, you know, it has the chance of, um, by like confusing all of our team members. Let's confuse Red13, so now he's attacking our own team. Which is lovely. And he's pretty strong as well, so I don't really want him attacking <laughs> my own crew. Right, can we high potion cloud, please? Because we can't even do magic, because we've got. we're all silenced. Ah, oh, these pesky pumpkins! Yeah, it's alright, we'll have dealt with them soon enough. Now that Red 13's not confused anymore, we've got three people attacking. Oh god. I say that as they do funny breath. Oh, okay. 
At least the one who's confused is Eris. Oh god, they're doing it again! Oh, thank god for that. Yeah, I was gonna say, at least if Eris is attacking our own crew, at least she's pretty weak. And she's just attacked herself. Well done, Eris. <laughs> Thankfully, in this game, I don't know, some RPGs are different, um, but in this, in Final Fantasy VII, the status effects don't carry over past the battle. So if you're kind of, you know, a lot of games, if you're poisoned in battle, then you'll stay poisoned. And whatnot. If you're confused, you'll stay confused afterwards. In this, once the battle's over, everything is kind of, the slate's wiped, the slate is wiped clean. Here we go. So, oh, there's the safe up there. But we're not quite ready. We haven't got all the codes yet. So in this little box is an enemy launcher, which is a weapon for Barrett. And if you remember, the clue was something like the box with the most oxygen. And this is the box inside the little kind of garden, which obviously would be full of oxygen from the lovely plants. So dial number one is right. 36. And the last one is... It gave you a big clue about kind of go to a chair and then take a certain number of steps this way and that way. So it's up here. And just over there, something's written on the floor. Dial number three is right 59. So we'll just check out what's in this little box here. A magic source. And then we're going to pop over to the safe. Hopefully we won't get into another battle along the way. But you never know. Right. Now, before we go opening this safe, I'm just going to heal everyone up. Because we're going to be in for a little bit of a surprise when we open this safe. Right, here we go. I have a bad feeling about this. Should we still open the safe? Of course we should. Just when I collected all the clues. Right, okay, so we've got to go right 36. Oh, God. <laughs> Left to 10. You can't go past any of them. Then right to 59. Oh, no, we went too far. Okay, we messed it up. We're going to have to start again. You do get as many goes as you want, so don't worry about that. Fail. Okay, so 36. Oh. 10. What is it? Oh, 59. And then 97. Come on. Boom. Oh, God. <laughs> I forgot to actually press circle when you go to the number. What an absolute clonker. Okay. Success! Ooh, is that a little material? A uh, summon material that's just popped out the safe? And a boss! What's that doing? A boss inside the safe! This dude is called Numbers. Uh, I can't remember which way round you're supposed to do it. I mean, obviously, you can do it either way you like, but. Kind of half of him is magical and half of him is like physical. And whichever one, once you knock half of his energy off, half of it will die. Um, and you'll be fighting the other half. And okay, we'll we'll do big guard actually. That'll come in nice and handy. Can't do it until the summons over though. One of the really good things about that white wind is, you know, it heals everyone. Um, and one of the really good things about that is that you don't have to rely on the one person who can do healing to be the person who, you know, heals everyone. As long as you've got enemy skill, you'll be able to do that white wind. Cloud's got his limit break. And he's got a brand new limit break there as well that we're going to be able to show off. Flim Hazard. Let's wallop him first. I can't remember if anyone has still got sense on them. There we go. So Cloud's done big guard. And if you see on the left hand side, kind of next to our names. Now, 
we've got. Um, I'm waiting for the, the little kind of attack thing to go in. There we go. Next to each of our names, we've got like a red bar and an orange bar, and that's kind of our defensive barrier and our physical damage barrier. So they'll kind of slowly do down as we get hurt. That's a bit of a shield for us, so we can take more of a beating now. Oh, we got another limb break. What does Seal Evil do? Constrains and stops the magic of all opponents. Oh, really? I think we could do with a healing wind instead though, actually. Oh, I think we can poison this guy as well. Should have poisoned them earlier, really, to get the kind of the full effect of it. But I'm pretty sure we can poison him. There we go, that's a nice tasty healing wind. Good work, Alice. See his attacks now that we've got that barrier on, I feel. Right, what are we gonna do? Let's just go for a classic. Good old attack. Hmm, she what could Eris do? Eh, she could always bring an apple along out the bag, why not? And we didn't poison him, so let's try Bio again. Pretty sure he can poison him. Yeah, so whichever kind of half of him, if you if you if you get him down to half energy with a physical attack, then I think the physical part of him dies, and he'll be left with just the magic person. And vice versa, if you kill him with a ma and a ma if you knock half his energy off with a magic attack, then the magic part survives. Oh, what are we doing? Two blood fang. Oh, in fact, this is uh, the thirteen's new limit break that we haven't seen. So this hurts them and it absorbs energy as well and magic points. Very nice move. Oh dear, I think I did it the wrong way round. <laughs> this is the harder of the two. Ouch! Yes. Okay, we need to phoenix down quick. Yeah. There's a certain you should you should do him you should hurt him with a certain type of attack. I think magic is the the way you're supposed to do it. So now we're having to fight the much harder second half of the battle. Which is slightly not nice, but we'll be alright. Okay, we can big guard our way. And then enemy skill, we're gonna white wind. Heal everyone. Come on. Yeah, so this is going to be a lot harder than I anticipated because of my getting in on the go getting this second half of the battle. We should be fine though. We've got our big guard up. We've still got summons we can use. We've got all sorts. I think we can still poison him, hello. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working. I don't think he's got that much energy left anyway. We should be fine. Makes things a bit more... Spices things up a bit, because up till now I think the game has been extremely easy. To get, I mean, the game is quite easy if you know what you're doing anyway. Bosh! Bloody hell! A little bit of that. Can we have another apple on? That was a massive attack. Right, let's cure Cloud because he's getting a bit low. And this bio is not working, is it? <laughs> let's just go for ice too. Nine hundred. That is that apple is a beast. Boom! Kill him. A nice little chunk of experience. So that is the kind of. The first optional boss, I guess. And that Cosmo memory is going to be how Red 13 learns his final ever limit break. So let's collect that summon material, Odin. And if you go back to the safe, there's a key to the basement. So I'm going to give someone that Odin material just because why not? You know, we want to test out. I've never been a big fan of Titan, to be honest. Um, I want to test out all the different material, the summons and whatnot show you what they look like. So, let's just heal up a bit. God, we're low on magic points, aren't we? But, thankfully, oh, I was going to say, thankfully there's not much more fighting to be done for a while. 
apart from these little mini fights. Yeah, so that is the first kind of optional boss in the game. You don't have to... Sorry. You don't have to open the safe, you don't have to get the code, you don't have to do any of that. So you could miss that summon, you could miss that boss. Um, you could miss the key to the basement, which would miss out a pretty big piece of the game, I think. But, um, yeah, so that's the first kind of optional bit of a game, I guess. Oh, come on. These guys are scales, and if they're leaning one way, it means that physical attacks hurt them and magic attacks don't. And if they're leaning the other way, it means that magic attacks hurt them and physical attacks don't. Very annoying. <laughs> Let's see how you like some of this. Come on. <laughs> Yay! He was the... <laughs> we got the right type of attack. Yeah, so I don't know which way round they are, and they tilt every... like, all the time throughout the battle. So... Okay, hang on. The other one is tilted in the opposite direction to these guys. Go on, Eris. Do the business. Boom! Have some of that. Thank you very much, guys. We got a weapon when we when we kind of did the whole storyline with Ver13's dad. We got the Seraph comb after you complete that. And see hit that makes his attack 68 down there. Clouds is only 36. And Eris's is 28. So it just shows how massively, how much massively stronger Red 13 is than everyone else at the moment. Right, so this should all be familiar if you remember that flashback from so long ago where... <laughs> Come on! Ugh, what are you? You two-headed beast. was a pretty solid attack. It's taken a bit more serious. Boom. Right now we're gonna whip out the blood fang. One red. Finish him! Oh what? <laughs> okay. Maybe not. This is a shambles. <laughs> And now a cure, and when the only person who needed cure and is now dead. Ugh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God! Just die! Jesus Christ! I don't care if you're excited. Just die! There we go. Red thirteen has still got some magic left in him. Oh, okay. That did the job. So we want to go through this door, which you'd only be able to get into, by the way, if you had the basement key. So if you didn't have that basement key, you'd never be able to get into this room, which you're going to find out now is why it's so vital. To wake me from my nightmare. Who is it? Never seen you before. You must leave. You were having a nightmare. You don't look good. Hmm. A nightmare? My long sleep has given me time to atone. What are you saying? I have nothing to say to strangers. Get out. This mansion is the beginning of your nightmare. You can say that again. <laughs> hmm. What do you know? Let's talk about Sephiroth. Like you said, this mansion is the beginning of a nightmare. No, it's not a dream. It's for real. 
Sephiroth has lost his mind. He found the secrets hidden in this mansion. Sephiroth? You know Sephiroth? Bit of acrobatics? You start first. That's how it was. So, Sephiroth knows he was created five years ago and about the Genova project. He was missing but has just recently reappeared. He's taken many lives and is seeking the promised land. Now it's your turn. Sorry, I cannot speak. What? You're serious? Hearing your stories has added upon me yet another sin. More nightmares shall come to me now. More than I previously had. Now please leave. I think if we go to leave now, he talked. Nope, okay. I thought if we go to leave, he was going to talk to us. You're still here? Ah, oh, I think maybe we have to ask who he is first. Who are you? At least tell us your name. I was with the Shinra Manufacturing Department in Administrative Research, otherwise known as the Turks. Vincent! And he is going to make up the third and final member of our crew. So I'm afraid Eris is going to get the boot. It's the only way you guys voted who was going to be in the team. Or Vincent. The Tex? Formerly of the Tex. I have no affiliation with Shinra now. And you? Cloud. Formerly of Soldier. You are also with Shinra? Then do you know Lucretia? Who? Lucretia. The woman who gave birth to Sephiroth. Gave birth? Wasn't Genova, Sef wasn't Genova Sephiroth's mother? That isn't completely wrong, but just a theory. He was born from a beautiful lady. That lady was Lucretia. She was an assistant to Professor Gast of the Genova Project. Beautiful Lucretia. A human experiment? There was no way to cancel the experiment. I couldn't stop her. That was my sin. I let the one I loved, the one I respected most, face the worst. So you slept as a punishment? Isn't that strange? That thinking... Okay. Yeah, anyone who's a proper expert on Final Fantasy VII, like even more than me, who kind of really knows their stuff, is the encounter rate increased for the for Shinra Mansion or something? Because I've played this game a lot, and every time I get here, I always think, Jesus, you can't go two steps without getting into a fight. Zephroth. We meet again. Being here brings back memories. Are you going to participate in the reunion? I don't even know what a reunion is. Really? Genova will be at the reunion. Genova will join the reunion, becoming a calamity from the skies. Genova? A calamity from the skies? You mean she wasn't an ancient? I see. I don't think you have the right to participate. I will go north, past Mount Nibble. If you wish to find out, then follow. Reunion? Calamity from the skies? Ugh, she's throwing material at us now! Ooh, he's off! Oh, cheers for the materia. Destruct. Sounds pretty hefty, doesn't it? I don't think we're gonna leave that behind without equipping it. Tell a lie. <laughs> we are we are gonna not equip it. I never use that material. I was thinking it was another one that we're gonna get later. I always forget that you have to run away before he kind of calls you back. If I go with you, will I meet Hojo? Dunno. 
But we're after him and Sephiroth, so I guess sooner or later. Lucrecia. Alright, I've decided to go with you. What? Being a former Turk means I'm... Being a former Turk, I maybe have helped you. Alright then. Right, so I'm going to leave the crew as it is right now. So because he's such a kind of strong magical character, he will take over that role of kind of healing people like Eris did, but also doing a lot of kind of attack and magic as well. He's also someone who uses a gun, so he can sit comfortably in the back row. Right, so I'm going to run outside of Nibelheim now, because then we can get on the phone and swap our team with the PHS. That PHS, you're only allowed to use it on the world map. So first of all, let's yoink all of her equipment. And we're going to take her silver armlet off her as silver armlet as well. Because that's a really good, really good item. And it's bye for now, Eris. Hello, Vincent. So let's see what the best equipment we've got that we can give Vincent. So at the moment he's got a Quicksilver gun. Uh, we've got a Peacemaker, which does have one less slot for materia, but it's double growth and it's got a better attack percentage. Again, don't know what that means, but... <laughs> oh, he's already got a Silver Armlet. Yeah, so let's get sticking some materia on then. So what do we want to grow fast? We'd like the HP plus and the MP plus to grow fast. They're really good. Although, we don't want to waste a double slot. So I think all and restore will have them growing twice as fast. Giving them MP plus, a runner, an enemy skill. No point giving them long range because he's already got a gun anyway. Ah, oh, let's give him gravity as well, eh? Why not? Okay, so we'll use a tent because you can see our magic points are rock bottom. Alright, so it's back through Nibelheim, and then if you remember from the flashback, this was the place we went to, wasn't it, when we went up Mount Nibble? Or Nibel? I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Um, and there's a reactor, there's the Nibble or Nibel reactor up this way as well. So this isn't too far a walk. Might fight a few enemies along the way. Nothing like in the Shinra Mansion though. If this was the Shinra Mansion we'd have had about eight battles by now. Do, 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 do. Oh we got some giant grasshopper things and Oh, I forgot to put Vincent in the back row. We'll do that after this fight. So yeah, Vincent's a really good character. I really like Vincent. And he's got his own little side story that we will complete. I think we've got to do that quite a bit later in the game. But we'll definitely do that to learn a bit more about Vincent and his history. So he's another kind of ex-member of Shinra. So that's kind of, you know... There's a lot of backstory there. You know, we used to work for Soldier, he used to work for the Turks. The guys who are now chasing us. Oh, bloody hell, Cloud's taking a beating, isn't he? Come on, Vincent. Get your cure and gear on. Okay, he's not going to get a chance to. Right, let's just super quickly heal up and on our way. So I think, yeah, if we go up here, you see that little treasure chest at the top? That is a an item. I believe it's a weapon for Cloud, and I think it's a really good one. So we are going to nab that. A rune blade. Yeah, let's check it out. So at the moment he's got the Force Stealer. That has got double Materia Growth, which is pretty nice. 
Okay, it's, oh, okay. So it's slightly stronger, and it's double materia growth, and it's got four slots instead of three. So yeah, that is a pretty tasty improvement. Is there anything that we'd we quite like to have kind of growing twice as fast? We're definitely going to put something on it. In fact, hmm, I want to put I'll put long range back on him, but. I don't think there's any point in the long range being in a double slot because there's no real benefit to kind of upgrading it. I guess let's just put the summon on there so we can upgrade the summon. It's always good to have leveled up summons because then it means you can do it more than once per battle. And we've got to put Vincent in the back row, haven't we? And actually, we've just... Oh god, I just realised there's Red 13 still in the back row even though he hasn't got long range on him. Yeah, he is. Okay, so he needs to be at the front, and Cloud needs to be at the back. There we go. Thankfully, the encounter rate here is nothing like it was in the Shinra Mansion. And we're going to cross the bridge, which presumably has been repaired, because if you remember in the flashback, we were walking across this bridge, and it snapped, didn't it? And then we all kind of fell to the ground. There was us... Us, Tifa, Sephiroth, and a few Shinra soldiers. And we all fell down to the mountain. So presumably someone's repaired the uh, bridge. Unless that never happened. I don't know, we've already... We're already questioning the fact that, you know, supposedly the village was burned down five years ago, and yet here we are, and it looks exactly like it always has done. This seems very odd. Is Cloud lying to the team? Has he has he remembered it wrong? Did they rebuild it? Sure, we'll find out as we proceed. Yeah, the bridge is all in working order now. Maybe someone just fixed it. Right. Now before you go down any of those pipes, those see all those pipes at the top? Well I'll show you in a minute when we're not in a fight. Um, but they're all numbered and they kind of you can jump down them and they'll take you to certain places below. But before you do that, you want to oh. Has Vincent just lost his turn? I didn't even choose what I was doing there and it just it just went away. Maybe that's what stare down does. Mm. You will miss your turn. It looks like it, because no one's moving. There we go. Ah, good wear cloud. Yeah, so there's numbered pipes, and they all take you to like, different places uh, down lower than the cave. But before you go down any of them, you want to go a bit. You want to go down a ladder and do something, which I'll show you in a, in a sec. Yeah, so if you go down here, I believe this is it. No, oh, yeah, you go down here, and then you go down to the next ladder, and you knock that ladder down. And what that does is it kind of... It means that you can come back up once you've slid down the pipes. Because you can come back up that ladder now. So we'll just pop off to the left, and there's a little something to collect around here, if I remember rightly. So in this cave, if we go over here... We've got a Sniper CR. Which is, obviously it's a gun. So that's going to be a weapon for Red Thir not Red 13. Um... I forgot his name now, oh, Vincent! <laughs> it's gonna be a weapon for Vincent, isn't it? It's a gun. Is it down this way, maybe? Oh, yes, of course. It's the the materia pool, isn't it? Where we came in the flashback. And now there's an elemental materia. And that is all I wanted to show you. That is literally it. And now we've got to go all the way back to that room with the pipes. Actually, just before we do, we'll see if that is an improvement for. Hmm, it's a tough one. It's a bit stronger. It's way better attack percentage. I 
don't know what that means. I'm guessing it must mean accuracy because sniper rifles are really accurate and that's in that's an incredible increase. It has got more slots on it as well. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to take the hit and not have not have the double growth. But I mean actually, is there anything No, no. I'm going to stick with the double growth because there's nothing there's no new material that I really want to equip. If there had been a kind of a piece of material that I would have liked to give him, then I'd have gone with it. But there's nothing really that I want to add to his arsenal at the moment. Right, so here we are, back in the room with the pipes. So we want to go back up top, and there's only actually two pipes that we want to go down. And one of them we didn't really need to go down, but I'm going to do it anyway just for the kind of completion's sake. Yeah, so we're going to go down number two. Whee! And that's going to give us a power soul, which is a weapon for Tifa. Watch out for that big, massive lobster thing over there. Don't run into him yet. <laughs> we'll come across him very shortly. That is going to be a new boss, and that's we're going to kind of take him on and then end the episode there. But, um,. Yeah, I just want to get this one last item and then we'll fight him. And there's a save point just in front of him as well, so you want to make use of that and kind of, you know, get everyone healed up before you get into that fight. So yeah, so if we go down number four now, and this is the one that we're really interested in. So that other thing we've just picked up was a weapon for Tifa, but we're not using it anyway, so that's not a huge big deal. But this is... Yeah! All materia. Absolutely love it. Can't get enough of this stuff. I mean, even if I'm not going to use it, I'll attach it anyway because it kind of. I want to have all materials getting leveled up. We're going to equip the sniper and then that's going to allow us the freedom to have an extra thing. An extra slot. So we're going to put all. Obviously, there's no point in having enemy skill attached to all because the enemy skills just do whatever they do. So what are we going to have all of? We're going to have all fire. Okay, we've got a level 2 fire there. That's pretty nice, being able to do le all, all fire, level 2. I'll take a bit of that. Yeah, so you definitely want to be leveling up your all materials as much as possible the whole way. Don't ever... Ah! In fact, there's a few enemies, or there's one enemy down here, this guy. I don't even think I've got steel equipped, which is really annoying. There isn't these guys you can steal a gold. Ooh, we got flamethrower there because he did it on cloud. Lovely stuff. Yeah, you can steal a gold armlet from them, which is a really good. It's best than silver armlet, obviously. It's kind of by far the best. Oops, Daisy. That just healed him. Yeah, it's by far the best defensive item you can get at this start of the, at this part of the game. If I was really going to be fussy, then I would sit here and... Ah! Painful. Yeah, if I was going to be really fussy, I'd sit here and grind until I saw three of these guys and make sure I stole three gold bracelets. But, ah! We're not going to do that. There will be an opportunity to buy those gold bracelets later in the game anyway. Not too far from here actually. Um, so it's not the end of the world if you don't get to steal them here. So I tell you what, we're not making this look easy are we? Red 13. Let's have a bit of blood fang. Oh and that means that he's learned flamethrower as well. Happy days. So both enemy skills have just had, had flamethrower added to their arsenal now. I'm not really fussed about using all my magic and stuff on this fight. Ooh, let's check out Vincent's uh, limit break. He's got a one of a kind limit break. Nothing else is like his limit break. Basically, it turns him into a beast and you lose total control of him for the fight. For the whole rest of the fight until he kind of dies. Um, if that happens. Um, you know, it's in, in some ways it's really good, in other ways it's really annoying. Like, we've lost our kind of healer now, 
But thankfully we've got other people who've got enemy skill who can do that white wind. Um. Oh dear, that didn't go well, did it? <laughs> yeah, you have no control over what spell he does, which is pretty annoying. Um, but he is a lot more powerful. Um, so swings and roundabouts. It's not my most favourite limit break in the world. I often find myself not using it deliberately, just because it can be quite annoying. Particularly in certain battles. Oh no, he's going to do it again! Particularly in situations like this, where he keeps doing a fire move, which is healing the enemy. And I can't stop him doing it because I've got no control over him. Please stop it, Vincent! Right, so there we go, we can do White Wind, which is basically, I mean, it's a lot more expensive than doing... Oh my god, he's doing it again. <laughs> yeah. First-hand experience here of how annoying it can be when... I'm going to run away from this battle, actually. Because there's so much chance that he's going to keep healing 800, like, every turn or every other turn. That... Oh, he's doing it again. <laughs> You know, it'd be an absolute nightmare to kill him if he keeps healing them at 800 per, you know, per turn or per every other turn. Will you pack it in, Vincent? Yeah, so that is a kind of... That... Yeah, so that limit break is a bit of a kind of, you know, a blessing and a curse all at once. So... I kind of, I certainly don't, I try to avoid using it if there's anyone who's got a resist, or if anyone who's resistant to fire, because then you just really <laughs> cause yourself all kinds of pain, like I did in that fight there. Right, so this dude is called the Materia Keeper, and he's probably the hardest boss in the game up to this point, I'd say. Still nothing that you can't handle if you just kind of take your time. Like, let's whack on a big guard, straight from the off. Ouch! Yeah, so we'll whack on a big guard, straight from the off, and then that's going to really kind of increase our defense against magic and against physical attacks. So this, you know, this is why this is why I wanted to go and get that big guard enemy skill, because it's so, it's so useful. We'll do a bit of bio, because I think we can... Poison him. Give him an aqua lung as well. Ooh, and I haven't shown you that new summon yet, have I? Odin. I think Odin's the new Oh yeah, Odin was the one that we got in the safe and we just poisoned them. Happy days! Yeah, Odin we got in when we unlocked the safe, didn't we? So I'll show you what that does. Gunge Lance. That's not very nice. I love this one. All the summons in this game are so cool. I mean, to be honest, across the whole Final Fantasy series, the summons are always really cool. Here he is, on his steed. Go, Odin! Throws a spear to the sky, and wallop! 1100, nice. Yeah, that's going to be fire level 2. See, now that we've got Barrier on, his, his attacks are a lot weaker. Give him another Aqualung, why not? We might as well go all out and just... Oh dear, don't do fire on him. Oh no. Okay. There's a mental note. If fire, is <laughs> if fire heals him, then whatever we do, do not do... Vincent's limit break. Right, let's everyone give everyone a little cure, I guess. Why not? Have a little bolt. We might be in need of another big guard soon, because our barrier levels are getting quite low. Oh, I've just realised. I didn't even know that was a thing. But that cure did a lot less than it normally does. I think it's because we've got the magic barrier on, so it actually reduces how much cure does as well. I didn't even realise that. 
Right, so we'll cast, cast Big Guard again, just to be on the safe side. Probably being overly cautious here, but never hurts. Probably finish him off with physical attacks here, I mean... We're making easy wear for this, aren't we? He's not even getting it, you know... He's not putting us in any danger at all. I don't know how much energy he's got and we're knocking. See that? Every now and then you'll see a number just appear up on him. Oh, he's curing himself, is he? What a cheeky monkey. A thousand? Swine! Yeah, that's 262 there. That's the poison effect. That's why it's so good to poison enemies. Boom! Your cure didn't do you any good there, did it, mate? No, it didn't. Nice little chunk of experience and a gem ring. Ooh, and a piece of materia. Counter. Now, counter is, in my opinion, one of the best materials in the whole game. It, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it basically kind of gives you a chance of counter-attacking every time someone hits you. So my recommendation for the kind of, for the cover materia would, oh sorry, for the counter materia would always be to give it to the person who also has cover. Because then, so I guess we're just going to have to drop the long range again. Because then, the person who's covering, you know, takes the most hits for the team. And so it just means there's even more chance of him doing a counter-attack. So it's just kind of, he's getting a lot more, well, he's just getting a lot more kind of hits in. So we've done that. So Cloud now has counter and cover. And that is where we're going to leave. That's the story of this episode, isn't it? Got eight enemy encounters. Right, so that's where we're going to leave the episode for today. So we finally got our full team together. Vincent, Red13 and Cloud. And we fought two bosses. So, we're going to carry on down this path, north through Mount Nibble, to carry on in pursuit of Zephyroth. And we'll see where that takes us next time. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really happy to be back recording again. I've missed it a lot. Um, so, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I don't care if you're excited. Just die!